Okay, we're going to try to record this again. It's going to be part one of the review, um, binary compound nomenclature review, um, and ionic compounds. Just to review re really quick, there's three types of binary compounds. Um, ionic ones that are mainly metals and nonmetal combinations, molecular compounds, that are non-metal, non-metal combinations, and binary acids. And in this first video, we're just going to deal with the first type, the ionic compounds. Remember the rules. Net charges have to add up to zero in all binary compounds and in IDE except for acids, and we'll talk about them in part three. Ionic compounds get no prefixes. The only time there's something different is when we're in the stock system for transition metals and some of the group 13 through 16 metals where they use Roman numerals, and we'll show you some examples of that. And to figure out the Roman numerals, most of the time you have to look at the anion to determine the charge on the cation. Um, these mainly apply to this group right through here and all the transition metals. Remember this group here is plus one, this is plus two, most cases this is plus three but there's some plus or minus four and but in the metals case they're going to be plus four and then we go down through and this would be minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, and we don't worry about these guys here. So let's keep going. And I'm going to slide over. And we'll do some of the, the examples here. So to start with, we'll start with sodium chloride. We're going to go from name to formula and then we'll go backwards in the second half. So sodium is Na plus one charge, chlorine minus one. We have a net zero and so it just snaps together as NaCl. Next one, calcium. Uh, let me do a little better job of that. Calcium chloride. Ca plus 2. Chlorine's minus 1. Obviously, we don't have a net zero charge. We need a second chlorine. So this will end up as CaCl2. And as we keep moving along here, we'll go to the stock system examples. And we have iron we have iron to oxide. And we look here, we got iron, the plot the Roman numeral here shows you the charge so it's plus two and oxygen which is minus two 99.9 percent .9 of the time and it becomes i f e o because we have a plus two minus two as we move along we go to iron three oxide Fe plus 3 now because we have Roman numeral 3 here. Oxygen still minus 2. We can use the crossover method where we take the number of the charge, move it over to make it the subscript of the anion, take the number of the charge for the anion, make it the make it the subscript there so it's going to be Fe2O3 and if we look at this we have Fe plus 3 Fe plus 3 and 3 negative 2's so we have a net charge of plus 6 minus 6 
<clears throat> now we'll move to formula to name. And again, it's fairly straightforward. If we had KF, we know that this is potassium. And F is fluorine, which converts to fluoride. Remember, everything always ends in IDE. Next one is barium chloride. We don't have to worry about prefixes, remember. So this is barium chloride. And we don't have to worry about Roman numerals either because barium's in the second column. And then finally, we have PBO and PBO2. <clears throat> PB is lead, so we can write that down for both. But now, and it's going to be something oxide on both of them. But as you can see here, lead's down here, and it sometimes has a different charge. So we have a negative 2 charge on this oxygen. So this has to be a plus 2. So this is going to be lead to oxide. Now, on the second one, we have two oxygens for a net charge of negative 4. So lead has to be plus 4 because there's only one of them. So this is going to be lead 4 oxide. And that 